Good evening, Simon here, Explosive Action. I'm back with my February update. Got some serious mixed formats here this time. We've got uh, Japanese VHS on the top. We've got a book, CD, cassettes, vinyl, DVDs, and Blu-ray. But the only thing missing is a laser disc. Oh well, maybe next time. So I'll start with the one VHS, and I'm very happy to get this one. Japanese VHS of Final Reprisal. Gary Daniels' uh, second film way back when, uh, 1988, shot in the Philippines, and um, it's a glorious, uh, glorious piece of uh, jungle exploitation, lots of exploding huts, um, Gary is really just learning his way around acting at this point, it's uh, it's pretty hit and miss, and um, it's a lot of fun because it's directed by the great Teddy Page, who, um, one of my favourite uh, action directors from the Philippines, did Phantom Soldiers and all those other wonderful films. And uh, Final Reprisal is just another good one in his uh, repertoire. So, yep, it's uh, quite a silly one too. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, the tape was from Amazon Japan. Um, and you don't get pictures at Amazon Japan. So, you know, if you get a faded spine, that's pretty much what you're going to get. But I was really happy with how vibrant the front looks. Very happy with that. Amazon Japan no longer shipped to Australia. None of the Amazons except for... Amazon US uh, first party ships to Australia anymore uh, because of our stupid tax laws. Um, so I had to get this shipped via a remailer company called White Rabbit Express. Gave them a trial because the tape was very cheap. The tape was about $10. And all up postage um, in a domestic uh, postage in Japan to the remailer and their fee, which is very small, and then international postage where they repackage it into a nice box. Um, I think I paid about $40 all up, and I was quite happy with that. Um, maybe 45 but whatever. It was uh, really good, actually. I was really happy with that. Um, so White Rabbit Express, if you want to get things from Japan. I know there's plenty of mailers, uh, remailers out there, but I recommend them. And I also recommend Final Reprisal on uh, Old Victor, Japanese tape, and... Uh, number seven in their uh, action series and this time i've got a book i don't usually have books but this is the real ghoul a diary of a cinephile by usta malagam who is the singer from black metal band denial of god and uh, he decided to make a book sort of explains it all on the back here um, apparently he did a little uh, fanzine a few issues because he just likes writing short reviews and sort of compiled them and then uh, we end up with a book, so it's um, it's pretty simple, straightforward stuff. It's a bit like um, uh, the Gore Score. Um, it's just his short little reviews of movies that he's watched, a few nice photos, score out of ten. Very quick stuff. I actually quite like it um, because it's not too elaborate. It's not some college grad three-page essay about the movie it's just this is a movie it had gore and tits four out of ten you know that's that's all i want and uh yep you can get it on feral books um and uh yeah i'll give that one a recommendation the real ghoul all right we'll do the cassettes and the cd because there's only one of those latest demo or ep from aseptic these guys are really good this is cascading fluids really dig the cover on that one really awesome stuff nice bright green and blue going on there I um, think they're a US band. I'm not too sure on that, actually. On Refining Darkness. Um, definitely a death metal band that gets better with each release. Their first tape that I've got is a full-length album. And it's all right. It's not too bad. But then the follow-up uh, tape, or demo, um, was a huge improvement. Uh, less tracks, but much better. And this one, again, these guys just know how to do the autopsy worship really well. Really good chuggy stuff. Nice tape. Um, yeah, the... Um, aesthetics are good and the songs are great so yeah that's a septic um, Australian band this is uh, Plowshare with Tellurian Insurgency these guys are pretty unique actually it's sort of Black Death um, I guess really if you want to look at it it's you know, 50% Black 50% Death Metal but it's um, quite odd I don't really know what to, what to say about it it's um, pretty extreme it's sometimes a bit dissonant sometimes a bit like portal sometimes it's just uh full straight ahead black metal it's 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 all over the shop actually but it's really good stuff 
Um, limited to 50 copies on this blue shell tape. There's an LP, plenty of copies of the LP around. Um, probably a CD as well, I'm not too sure. Um, and this is their third release. And um, yeah, good guys, really good stuff. I think they're from... Oh, I think they're from Canberra in the city's capital. I could be wrong there. Um, but anyway, Tellurian Insurgency from Plowshare recommended. Um, Leprophiliac. Leprophiliac. And Caskets of Flesh. Straight ahead death metal. That is that is literally all I can say about this. Just straight ahead death metal. Uh, picked this up from a local distro. A pretty new release. Um, and it's on Dismal Fate. They put out lots of good stuff. So 2019 release. Literally, it's just straight ahead death metal. I, I can't say much more, uh, except for it's good. Um, has a good sound that sounds a bit like the cover. It's fairly, um, fairly gore sounding, you know. Um, yeah, just look them up. Leprophiliac, Caskets of Flesh. Can't say much more about that, except for it's good. And uh, here we have... Cemeterian with Tomb of Morbid Stench. This has got a bit of an evil sound to it, a bit more black and a little bit of thrash in it. Good production, um, really cool uh, drawn art there. I really dig that with the uh, skeletons around the uh, big tomb. It's really good. Nice red logo on the white shell there from uh, what's the label? Unholy Domain. I'm not familiar with but um, again I got this one from a local distro that uh, has been carrying some import tapes for very cheap so I've been very happy with that Cemeterian Tomb of Morbid Stench uh, also very good so yep check them out every yeah, if I've got it it's good I don't show shit generally unless it's funny um, this is anything but shit this is awesome and um, comes recommended to me from uh, Brain Smasher who uh is a um, metal YouTuber and um, I found about a year ago, I started watching his videos, and one of them is speaking about this band called Ice, I-C-E, and the um, album is called, if it will focus, Apocalyptic End in White, and it's um, from about 2000, I think, and um, quite hard to get. It's very furious, is the best way of putting it. Kind of cheesy, but really awesome looking cover there with just all their... It's a bit like Covenant, but nowhere near as lame. This is, I reckon the best way to describe it is like um, Panzer Division Marduk, but infused with pandemonic hyper-blasting of the uh, frostbitten kind. It's definitely fast and um, no holds barred on this one. No gothy rubbish at all. It's on... Uh, crash and um long out of print long out of print so i got mine on discogs i waited until there was a decent price one and um yeah i recommend you do the same cd is in the player at the moment so yeah that's ice i c e with apocalyptic dreams end in white apocalyptic end in white and uh yeah definitely seek it out it's good stuff so we'll cut over to the Blu-rays now, some movies, and I picked up very cheap uh, the Monty Python Holy Trinity set, um, slightly old release from uh, Sony uh, Universal, and um, I kind of like, I really dig these releases they put out. They do really nice aesthetics and do a slim multi-pack, at least out here in Australia. They did it with like uh, the Rambo set, the Die Hard set. Um, yeah, they just do nice sets like this. One of my little things I like, but um, you get three classics holy grail life of brian many of life everybody knows these films nice blu-rays uh with the slip cover it's the same cover underneath um it was out of print uh, i kept putting it off but then i found it on ebay for 17 dollars, including shipping which was very good and it looked untouched so i was very happy with that um yeah you all know them and uh the transfers are great so yeah holy trinity monty python Equalizer 2, Denzel Washington. First movie was fun. I haven't seen the second one. Um, I got this for $2.50. Can't argue with that. Brand new. Still shrink-wrapped. And, uh, yeah, just some modern action. Um, sort of the uh, the Taken kind of vibe. Um, 
I'm assuming it's going to be fun. As I said, the first one was good. Don't know much more about that, but uh, yeah, I've heard it's pretty good, so we'll see. Upgrade time. Van Dam and Rodman and Rourke. Good old Mickey Rourke. Uh, double team. Uh, from, whoa, what is this, 95? Somewhere around there, 96 maybe. 97, bloody hell. Around the year is Time Cop. Um, double team is incredibly cheesy but fun action from Van Dam. I just did my, well, it was December, I did my JCV December. Um which was good fun, and I skipped over Double Team because I put the DVD in, and it looked like absolute shit. It was one of those DVDs that had not aged very well in terms of quality, so I skipped it and jumped on this very cheap US Blu-ray, um, including shipping from America to Australia. I paid an entire 14 Australian dollars for this, and um, I like the uh, the VHS sort of motif they got going on here. Um, uh, Mill Creek's been um, doing a few of these kind of releases and um, their Mill Creek used to be the sort of the name for poor quality but they've really improved their game um, it's you can see on the back there it's scope widescreen it's got DTS HD master audio it's got everything you need uh, for a quality release and um, yeah I couldn't be happier it's a nice one more Van Damme, and because another DVD that looked like crap, Double Impact. I did end up watching the DVD of this because it's a classic, but it looked terrible. Um, and I still buy DVDs, but some of these early, like 99 to 01 DVDs for Hollywood films, like blockbusters, just look like crap. But this new Blu-ray from MVD is great, uh, Double Impact. Again, these guys are gone with a VHS type cover. Two different companies, but they've gone with the uh, the rental store thing. I guess that's what Van Damme does to you. This one's got a truckload of features that I'll probably never watch, but um, they're nice to have. And uh, slip cover again, same stuff underneath, nothing to really show. And um, this was going for nearly $40, which I wasn't going to pay. And... Uh, Suddenly one day it just dropped to 17 and change, including shipping. Then it bumped up again the next day. So I was very happy to jump on that. Uh, relatively new release here from, uh, this is a Scorpion? Yeah, it's a Scorpion. This, uh, sorry, a Shout Factory. I always get Shout and Scorpion mixed up. This Island Earth um, 50s sci-fi, two and a half years in the making, uh, from 55. This one I've never seen, actually. I've been heard it is actually one of the classics um it looks like it's going to be a whale of a time um 4k scan of the original film negatives stereo goff stop stereophonic sound restored by the 3d film archive well there you go um commentaries trailers uh, documentary about two and a half years in the making that's cool they're the kind of features i do watch the the like the featurettes that go for as long as the film I do watch that kind of stuff, um, you know, like the history of Italian horror movie or something like that. I'll watch those, but I would rarely watch a 10 minute, you know, behind the scenes or anything like that. Um, and I have no love for commentaries, I cannot be bothered. This Island Earth looks like a lot of fun, 50s sci-fi right there. Just Can we just enjoy the name of this for a second? KFC. What a name for a movie. KFC. This is a Vietnamese gore horror film on a French Blu-ray with English subtitles. What a multinational world we live in. Um, I've heard this is pretty full on. It's and not very long. It's not even 70 minutes, I don't think. Quite a, um, quite a short film. But um, I think from what I've been told, it's going to bring the Gru... Um, again, slip underneath normal cover. I can't make out any of the French, of course, in the back, but um, there was a few of these on eBay going for a very cheap price, and um, it's a, is it 2012 film, I think? And the blue came out last year. Um, it's one of those things that I just kept looking at for ages and then became very hard to find. But it's sort of like Blood Feast, from what I understand, but you know, the modern Vietnamese version. A couple uh, start selling people as food in their fried chicken shop. Uh, just 
sounds amazing to me. Um, so yeah, KFC. I can't wait to check that one out. All right, I got some schlock here. These are um, <laughs> uh, I was at the pawn broker, and for two dollars fifty each, the same place I got Equalizer. Somebody dumped all their shitty zombie films, and so the first we have is Zombie Night from the director of Feast and Piranha. Um, I think this one's meant to be actually pretty good. So Anthony Michael Hall, Daryl Hannah, interesting casting there. Shirley Jones, Alec Rock. I know those faces, but I didn't know the names. Anyway, um, another Asylum film. I, I really enjoy uh, the pain of watching Asylum films. This is certainly not the last one in this update. That's for sure. Zombie Night bit of a theme going on here this is the day of the dead uh remake with mina savari and Vigan rames um i had the dvd i remember not liking this at all but it was there and it was cheap and the thing is a U a uk blu-ray in an australian porn broker that's kind of a strange thing so um you know i'll i'll, I'll happily pick up anything like that for that price when it's Sitting there, begging to be picked up. Zombie Apocalypse. Another Ving Rhames. Um, and another Asylum Pictures, I believe. A sci-fi channel. Yep, who knows. It's just going to be crap, but it'll be entertaining crap. CG Zombies, CG Blood, you know. Oh Zombie. I love this title. Bin Laden Will Die Again. Oh Zombie. How great is that? The Axis of Evil Dead. Now, I'm pretty sure the best thing about it is that cover and title. A lot of times when you have a good punny title, it's as good as you get. It does look pretty good, but I have been told to uh, lower my expectations. But look at that. Look, there's Zombie Osama right there. Just that look. I mean, uh, man, I, hope it's, I hope I'm entertained. I really do. Um, a Zombie. Axis of Evil Dead. Rise of the Zombies. Another one from um, the Asylum, this time with Danny Trio. And I have seen this one, and he's not in it very long. But, you know, that's what you get. It's a Zombielicious and a Kick-Ass Zombie Feast. Um, it was entertaining enough, I remember, for this one, so I'll revisit it in HD. Um, three of those were DVD upgrades. That, that's my life now. I upgrade Asylum Zombie Films to Blu-ray. <sighs> All right, we'll move on to the DVDs now, and we're not leaving Asylum Territory at all, no. This is Hornet. That's right, not Bumblebee, but this is Hornet. When aliens invade our minds, only a machine can save mankind. Oh, Christ. I don't know why. I, I do know why I do it. I just enjoy hurting myself. Um, three new Asylum DVD releases that I picked up here, local releases. They were uh, cheap for some reason, so for some reason they were cheap because they're asylum films um yeah it, it's it's bumblebee but it's hornet just as overlord is now nazi overlord um this one though i have watched i have to say it wasn't total shit i was actually entertained throughout tom sizemore may be on the cover and he does bookend the film and that's the end of it uh, he's obviously paid like a hundred bucks just to show up and then leave. Uh, Dominic Swain's got a pretty large role in it. And then it's just these two other blokes and their troops. And it's, yeah, I, uh, any kind of uh, Nazi zombie um, film you've seen, this is sort of another take on that. Um, yeah, mainly Black Overlord, which is obviously what they're going for here. Um, a bit cheaper uh, because Asylum. But... Um, yeah, I actually, I actually quite enjoyed this one. Um, they use the budget they've got, which is not much, to pretty good effect. There's a few kills and things. A lot of it they have to do off screen. The bullets firing and the muzzle shots are all very obviously CG. The explosions are hilariously fake. But um, there are a few bloodletting scenes, and there is some boobs, which is hey, we get some we get some boobs. I'm um, uh, just anyway boobs. So, Nazi Overlord, um, just temper your expectations and um, don't expect Overlord, just expect Asylum Overlord. And I enjoyed it. 
Monster Island. They had to get in there on the Godzilla craze. The heavyweight championship has begun. What the fuck? So, yep, yeah, I haven't chucked this one in yet. Um, yeah, I, I, hopefully it's as entertaining as uh, Nazi Overlord, really. Because, um, I don't know. I just, I just want it to not be terrible. Um, there is a winged looking zombie thing there, if I can focus. Zombie. Wing looking uh, Godzilla kind of thing there. And, uh, yeah, Monster Island. I do love their cover arts, though. Like, they are the absolute kings of the video store bait and switch. Like, wow, that looks spectacular. And you put it in, it's just a guy looking in the camera. But anyway, Monster Island. We'll see how we go. And here's some proper, proper sci-fi channel stuff. This is Roger Corman's Carnosaur 1 and 2. Um, very hard to get this double feature now. Exceedingly hard. Somebody on a local Facebook group was selling it for pennies, and I jumped on it before anybody else could. Um, as I knew, they are very hard to get, and I had wanted to see them for a long time. There is a third film as well, which I can get uh, separately, not too expensive from the UK, so that's nice. But these two, one and two, very hard to get. Carnosaur, it's carnivorous dinosaur. What just, yep. Roger Corman's been doing this stuff long before... He had Shark the Puss and all those films. He's been doing it for a while. And these ones are from 94. Yep, beautiful. Vintage, vintage Corman crap with dinosaurs. Yep, can't wait to chuck those ones on. It's going to be great. Now this little pile here. Uh, the last of the video stores in my local area has finally shut down video rental stores. That's it gone there are no more video rental stores anywhere close to me in sydney there may only be one or two left in sydney and that's not a small place um so it's very sad so this one shut down and i went through and picked up some stuff all the horror was mainly gone so that's all right i stuck to the action and i got some great cheese bail in forces championship and diva Trish Stratus. I don't know who this is. I don't care. But the WWE uh, action films, I get a lot of enjoyment out of. Um, they're sort of like... Uh, they're like new image, uh, new image action films. But, yeah, WWE. They're getting better as well. Like, the first ones are a bit poor. But then they get better and better. They're, they're always entertaining. So, yep, yeah, she's as tough as they get, apparently. Uh, bounty Hunters... Uh, million Dollars, Informant, uh, Mafia, Assassins. Yeah, 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 whatever. Bail in Forces. Hopefully she looks as good as that in the film. We'll make it entertaining. These were a dollar each or something. Breakdown, Hitmen, Retribution. They all have to die. With people I've never heard of, but I do recognise that guy's face. So, um, uh, English film, I think. Um, yeah, that's why I recognise it. It's a guy from London Heist. Um, one man's degradation and subsequent comeback after his family comes under threat. So there you go. It's a revenge film. I'm sure I'll get my dollars value for Breakdown Hitman Retribution. As I will for Ganglands with Michael Madsen and Eric Roberts. Man, those guys have really taken to the direct-to-video circuit in their, uh, shall I say, twilight years. Um, I reckon they're just going check by check at this point. It's kind of strange to see, but a lot of this stuff is entertaining. And a lot of the time, they actually are the proper stars. A lot of the time, they're not. They're in it for 10 minutes, but we'll see how we go with this one. Surely one of these two guys has got to be actually starring in it for more than two minutes. So let's hope. It does say that uh, one of the rival gangs here is led by Michael Madsen and the other by Robert Miano. Now, I don't know who that is, so that likely means he's going to be the star of the movie. I know how this game works, but anyway. Kind of a cool cover. I like what they've done with it. Uh, but someone is going to play Ganglands. Let's see how we go. Oh, God, I was laughing in the shop at this. Get our life. Get a life. Oh. Isn't that just poetry? Straight from the streets, bullet fest. Never heard of this thing before. This is why I like the 
X rentals from video stores, a lot of stuff doesn't get retail release, or it didn't. It was made to be rented, and so you could only get it as an X rental. Um, and that's how things like Get a Life come into existence. Um, just wow, Jamaican action. Jamaican action film. Local gangs, blackmailing, boxing gym. Well, it's always got a boxing gym in it. Um, bitter gang war explodes and a revenge can give way to the beginnings of unity oh wasn't that lovely get a life just absolutely brilliant followed by gutter king very violent looking cover there uh, it's not the size of the dog in the fight it's the size of, size of the fight in the dog oh that hurts anyway Yep, don't know anything about it. Looks kind of interesting. You see a bit of a theme with all these things I've picked up. They're just cheap action films that are usually going to be revenge movies. Maybe that's just what people rent. I don't know. I haven't rented in a long time. I just salvage stuff from the uh, ex-rental bins, which I won't better do any more, I think, which is a shame. But anyway, uh, yep, story about love and betrayal. I don't think he's loving it, that guy. Anyway. Hopefully things blow up. That's all I want. Just punch people and blow shit up. Heist with Ice-T and Luke Perry. What a combo. Ice-T's looking plenty pissed there. And I couldn't get that sticker off, which was a very shame. Um, Luke Perry. My God. There's no honor amongst thieves. The heist. Quite um, probably a rare DVD, this. The um, Eagle, old Eagle DVDs are not easy to find. Um, so that's a good thing. Certainly hadn't heard of it before. Mo, who is a jazz saxophonist. Oh. Oh, he has a parole brother come to stay. Vicious criminal C Note. Played by Ice T. C Note. Why not just call him Ice T? I, anyway. Stolen armored truck. Oh my god. Brother must face off against brother in a fight against good and evil. I should put this on sooner rather than later. It's even got an R rating. That's got to be good. Surely that's got to be good. Here's some more uh, WWE stuff. Inside Out was one of the more modern ones. Starring, I don't know, apparently his name is Triple H. That's the thing. Like, You'd think I would like wrestling because I watch WWE films. I don't know who any of these people are. Wouldn't have a clue. Never watched any in my life. I know who Stone Cold Steve Austin is, and he's done action films, but eh, this guy in the front, I don't know. So I hope that they do a good job and end up doing more of them, like the guy from uh, the Marine sequels. Um, you know, that's one of the wrestlers that does movies now. So, anyway, this has superstar Paul Triple H Levesque. He wants a quiet life, and after paying his debt, blah, blah, crosshairs, the local crime boss, sins of his past, blah, blah, usual story. Anyway, Inside Out. It's only got an M. We'll see how we go with that. Might be a bit watered down, and M is like a PG-13 in the States. We'll see. Uh, Mercenaries, which gets a strong violence MA. That's what I like to see. Modern war film, don't know any of the stars, doesn't matter. Outgunned, outnumbered, and outside the law. Look, explosions, tanks, they better be in the film. Better not just be talking heads. We will see, we will see. I don't know anything about it at all. Dollar each with cool covers, that was, that was pretty much what I was going for at this point. And the last of my cheapos was Wushu Warrior. The trailer for this looks pretty fun, actually. It, um... Like the cover and the back and the way it's put together sort of eh, made me go, oh god, this is going to be like a $2 film. It's at least a $2,000 film, at least by the trailer. It looks kind of entertaining, sort of like a um, Karate Kid kind of thing, but with Wushu. Um, and it's got, uh, what's his name? Uh, Matt Frewer, the guy with the terribly fake Australian accent. Or is it South African? I don't know. He's got some horrendous accent. He was in um, Lawnmower Man 2. He played Job. Oh dear, Wushu Warrior. Um, yeah, check the trailer out. It's on IMDb. It does look fun. All right. So now we're going to get on to the last DVDs. 
Proper action, not cheapo action here. We've got some Shaw Brothers. I lucked out. Lucked out big time on eBay. Uh, this one didn't luck out too much. I had to pay a bit of money for this. The rough, the Magnificent Ruffians. Uh, one that Extra the Mutilator had shown in his updates many times ago, a long time ago. And I remember putting it in my eBay watch list and then for the last two years at least, um, I've been watching the title come and go every day on the eBay watch list, but it was one of the American ones. And for whatever reason, I decided, no, no, this film, we have to get on the IVL. And then this IVL showed up, Hong Kong release, and uh, I nabbed it for a not terrible price, pretty decent, but not jingling money, just small folding money. Anyway, it's a Chang Che, um... Uh, Shaw Brothers, obviously, from, what year? 79. And, uh, yeah, it looks like a fun one. Obviously, Extra liked it, so uh, that's good enough for me to give something a go. And, uh, yeah, very cool. Very happy to add another one to the pile. Hadn't been getting Shaw's in a while. Um, all right, so these three coming up. Great local score on Australian eBay. They were put up for very cheap price from a seller that I guess didn't know what he had. That's fine by me. Heroes of Sung, um, IVL in the slip, which is always wonderful. Pretty hard one to get. I had the Taiwan release, but um, yeah, I'll upgrade a Taiwan to a proper IVL if the price is right, and it was. Um, yeah, um, from uh, Shen Chiang. And uh, it's got low lay in it, so that's always good. And uh, yeah, I haven't watched this one yet. I haven't watched my other DVD of it. It's one of those ones I'm upgrading without having got to it yet. That happens. And uh, yeah, that's about all I can say, really, except for it's supposed to be quite a good one. And not easy to get on the IVL range. Very nice with the slips. Very happy. These two, though. My God. This is... The Bastard. Really dug that. That's awesome. Still has its... Oh, look, it's still in the shrink. I've just cut a little slip on the side to get into it. This thing was shrink-wrapped. It was brand new. And it was dirt cheap. Absolutely dirt cheap. Quite a rare one. I've not seen it on eBay in... Well, I've never seen it on eBay, to be honest. Um, that says something when it comes to these IVL shores. If you haven't seen it on eBay in a while, it's going to be a legit rare one. Still has a brand new sticker on it, which is really cool. Um, from Chu Yuan, it's the director. And it is, what year is this? 73. Um, yeah, haven't seen it. But it's looking like a good one to me. So hopefully it's a good one. The Bastard. And this one shocked the hell out of me. That fiery girl. Shrink-wrapped, brand new IVL on local Australian um, uh, eBay from a seller that just didn't know what he had. Or didn't care, I don't know. Um, so again, I did a careful slice to get down there and uh, kept the shrink on. But um, this one I've seen, um, I had, again, the Taiwan DVD, and this is a really good film. Um, the discs inside these are largely the same as the uh, Taiwanese ones, um, but I was going to definitely upgrade when I saw it there, side grade. Uh, a Yen Chuan film, and it's got um, P.P. Chang in it, and uh, yeah, this one um, with uh, the Queen of the Swords there on the front is, yeah, a really good one to watch, so... Definitely recommend checking out that fiery girl if you can. Um, one of the better Shaw Brothers that I have seen. And uh, very stoked with this pickup. And lastly for this update, we're down to the vinyl records. And the first one here is Blind Illusion. Um, this is the thrash band formed by Larry Lalonde and Les Claypool of Primus before there was Primus. And you can tell there's a bit of Primus in the sound. It's not just straight ahead thrash. Like when it thrashes, it's straight ahead thrash, but it gets weird. It does get fairly weird. Um, I wasn't going to get it originally 
because it isn't one of my favorites, um, which I know Extra has probably got his mouth wide open at this point. Uh, it's not one of my favorites from uh, the classic thrash era, but uh, it was 15 whole dollars for the first press, which in this day and age for a record, um, I was just expecting Discogs pricing, and I did not have to pay that. And uh, it's really good condition, and yeah, as I said, the first press. So I'm very happy to get it made in England press on um, under one flag. And um, I played it, and yeah, look, I enjoyed it more than before. When it thrashes, it thrashes well. It's just some of the weird bits I'm going to have to get used to, but, you know, it's what you get with Claypool. Blind Illusion with their one and only record they ever did. Iron Angel, German speed metal band. Am I allowed to show those boobs? Well, I am. They're painted boobs. Winds of War. This is really good stuff. Uh, so much so that I've got another one from this band on on the way. This is their second album. I have the first one on... on uh, um, no, wait. I already got the first one, and I forgot to show it. I don't think I showed it last time. Anyway, I now have two Iron Angel albums. It's very late, and I'm very tired. This one's on Steam Hammer. Again, first pressing. Um, pretty ripping. It's borderline thrash. It's sort of... Um, it's mainly speed metal, but it, it does get into thrash territory quite often. Um, so you could call it either or all, really. And, uh, yeah, I think it's really strong stuff from, what year is this? Like, 86? Yeah, 86. 86 speed metal thrash from Germany. You really can't go wrong. You certainly can't go wrong with this one. Winds of War from Iron Angel. Very happy with that. Paid $15 for it. Again, not a Discogs price. Carnage, Dark Recollections. This is an absolute classic, Stone Cold classic. Um, one of the formative Swedish death metal bands from the early 90s. Um, sort of ended up becoming Dismember. I mean, half the crew here. One of the songs uh, even became a Dismember song. Um, is it Torn Apart? I think it might be Torn Apart. Um, yeah. What can I say? It's 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 an excellent album. It's not quite as catchy as um, In Tombs First or Dismembers discography, but um, it's up there. And this is the reissue uh, on Earache. Uh, it sounds good. One of their um, full dynamic range things they're doing uh, from the master tapes. And um, it was on Amazon Australia with free shipping for $19. Now... $19 for a record shipped in Australia, it would cost me about 14 to ship, just ship something. So that was insanely cheap. I don't know how they did it. Maybe it was mispriced, but anyway. Very happy to pick that one up. Yeah, it's a reissue, but it's um, at that price. And these Earache uh, full dynamic range uh, pressings are really good. So, yeah, and there's no bullshit. There's no, like, you know demo tracks and live rubbish it's just what you want it's the album so very happy with that as i am with this last one in this update satyricon rebel extravaganza my opinion the best satyricon album it is now 20 years old can you friggin believe it's 20 years old this thing when it came out it was oh no can't do that it's all a bit cyber it's not actually it really isn't um it sits very well next to um, something like Mayhem's Wolf, Lair, Wolf Slayer Abyss EP. Um, awesome double LP from Moonfog and Napalm at 45 RPM. That's why it's double LP. Sounds phenomenal. If you've got any other release of this on any format, I would recommend picking this thing up on the new reissue because, again, they've not gone and put stupid B-side tracks on there. It's just the album, but it's been mastered specifically for vinyl at 45 rpm and sounds fantastic um i absolutely love this album and i don't understand why the band don't play any songs from it anymore um the opening track uh tied in bronze chains they've played once in like 2001 or 2000 something like that and then never again i don't know why just because it's like 10 minutes long anyway that's the update, and that's Satyricon. Thanks for watching. See you on.